Now let me explain the different receptors present over the cell membrane of platelets. So the understanding of different receptors over the cell membrane of the platelet is very important to know how various chemical substances act on these receptors to activate the platelets during bleeding. In order to stop the bleeding, the platelets have to be activated and various chemical factors are there to activate the platelets. And also in during normal circulation, these platelets are kept in inactive form. This is because of binding of some chemical substances to the receptors so that the platelets which are in circulation, they are kept in inactive state. Only when there is injury, the platelets are activated to form covering of the injured hole to block the injured hole to prevent the blood loss. So let us understand what are the different receptors present over the cell membrane. So this is very important. So this is the platelet. The platelet membrane will have integral protein receptors. This integral protein receptors are of various type. So I will draw here the collagen fibers. There is a receptor for collagen fibers. This is the collagen. Collagen is a protein present in the collagen fibers and these collagen fibers are present in connective tissue. So where is this connective tissue? This connective tissue in the vessel wall is present just below the endothelial cells. So when there is the endothelial lining is stripped off, this connective tissue is exposed and there is a receptor that can bind to this collagen. So this is a glycoprotein, this receptor is glycoprotein 6. So I will make it a big receptor to understand. So this is the receptor glycoprotein 6 receptor for binding to collagen. Here I will draw one more receptor. This is a gly glycoprotein receptor glycoprotein 1B. This glycoprotein 1B receptor will bind to the consider this is a protein molecule. This protein molecule is one Willebrand factor. So this is the receptor for binding to one Willebrand factor. I will draw one more receptor here, glycoprotein receptor. This glycoprotein receptor can bind to fibrinogen. So this is the fibrinogen. So this glycoprotein receptor can bind to fibrinogen. I will just change the color of this fibrinogen. fibrinogen and this glycoprotein receptor is GP2B3A dimer. So it is a dimer containing two protein sub subunits, 2B is connected to 3A to form this receptor. This can bind to fibrinogen. I will draw one more receptor here. So this receptor can bind to activated thrombin, thrombin activated can bind to this receptor. These receptors are named PAR, what is this PAR, PAR is protease activation receptor. There are of two types of PAR activated by thrombin. PAR1 and PAR4. There are also receptors for prostaglandins, prostacyclins over the membrane. So consider this is the receptor for thromboxin A2. Thromboxin A2 can bind to this receptor. This receptor is for prostacyclin PGI2. See thromboxin A2 and prostacyclins are antagonistic to each other. The thromboxin A2 is an activator whereas prostacyclin is inhibitor of platelets. Thromboxin A2 is a vasoconstrictor whereas prostacyclin is vasodilator. These two are antagonistic to each other. There is one more important receptor present for action of ADP, very important. Yeah. 
this is a receptor present for action of ADP. So, ADP can bind to this receptor. ADP can bind to ADPs are nucleotides, right? ADP are nucleotides, they are containing purines, and this receptor is called purinergic receptor. This binds to the purines, purinergic receptor, and there are various types P2Y1 or P2Y12 receptor. So, it is very important to remember the names of these receptors because there are various drugs that can block these various receptors like clopidogrel. Heard of clopidogrel? Clopidogrel will bind to this P2 receptors, P2 purinergic receptors so that the ADP cannot bind to this receptor and ADP is a platelet activator. This ADP platelet activator cannot activate this platelet in forming the platelet plug and preventing the blood loss. So, if clopidogrel is given, this is an antiplatelet, prevents platelet activation. So, to summarize, which are the platelet activators which favors the platelet activation here? The mainly ADP, thromboxin A2, thrombin, one Willebrand factor, collagen. So, all these are platelet activators. Fibrinogen binding to this receptor helps in aggregation of neighboring platelets that I will be explaining. So, this is all about the various receptors. In the next lecture, I will be continuing with what is the function of platelet, how these platelets have role in preventing the blood loss. One need to understand, usually there is some damage to the small blood vessels that is happening every day. Daily what is happening? Damage to the small vessels are happening every day. That is usually normal and thousands of thousands of areas are getting damaged and those have to be plugged by these platelets. If there is deficiency of these platelets, there can be spontaneous bleeding through the small blood vessels that can result in subcutaneous hemorrhage throughout the body and also hemorrhages in the internal structures. So, there is some role of platelet, very important role of platelet to plug these ruptured areas in the small blood vessels in order to prevent the blood loss. So, let me explain the role of platelets in the next lecture how these platelets have role in preventing the blood loss.